Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. Before we get started, I just want to say that this show and all of our programming at Freedom Project is made possible thanks to Patriot Club donors like yourself. If you enjoy our content, please consider a donation to financially support what we're doing here. We produce 18 videos a week, every week, to keep you informed, and it costs money to produce. We, it's, a, it's a labor of love, but we need your help. Please consider supporting us with a tax-deductible gift, and as a token of our appreciation, we'll send you our trademark American Patriot Tumblr. Tumble with that. Simply visit patriotclub.us to show your support. Katie is off this week, but Dave Fiorazzo is once again joining me for uh, a co-pilot spot on The Dr. Duke Show. Good morning, David. <laughs> Good morning. All right, no bailing on this ship. Today, we start in Baltimore, Baltimore, where the, if there's a school district that's distinguished itself for not educating kids over the last couple of years, that would be Baltimore. <laughs> and in a stunning investigation, we find that a student with special needs received a report card showing passing grades for first semester. The only problem, he hadn't attended a single day of class. City Schools tells Project Baltimore in August the family chose to return to in-person learning. But by the time Quante learned he would not have a nurse due to a shortage, the deadline to sign up for virtual learning had passed. His IEP, updated in January, confirms this, stating Quante has been unable to attend school in person this school year due to BCPSS's lack of nurses and Connections is currently not able to provide a complete virtual learning program. In March, his mother requested his school records, expecting the most recent ones to be from spring 2021. In the first semester of this school year, according to his report card, Quante passed five classes, including modern world history and Spanish. In physics, he somehow earned a B minus. Do you remember taking physics? No. S. Brooks is also your teacher for performance. You don't know who that is? No. This report card says he passed Algebra 2 with a D. His teacher even wrote, Quante is a pleasure to teach with his quality of work improving. He shouldn't have any grades on there because he has, has not been to school. But according to Quante's report card, he has been in school. He was marked present 33 and a half days in the first quarter, even though he was never in class. Not one day. His family says those attendance numbers are falsified. In a country that is definitively not systemically racist, this is a country full of opportunity for all kinds of people. We've spent so much, we've, we've transferred so much money from the haves to the have-nots, all different races to try to help, to, to promote. There's legally under the law, there's not a single lick of difference between one person and another. This is not a systemically racist country. However, there are pockets of systemic racism and they are in the progressive school system. What other, how else would you describe it when the public schools aren't even caring that the kids don't show up? when these are mostly inner city and almost exclusively black students. They don't go to school, you get your grade of report card. Don't go to school, we don't care. We're still gonna make up comments, we're still gonna make sure that the, the city of Baltimore, the state of Maryland, and the federal government pays us everything we're due as if you had gone to school. And in this case, you have an actual uh, American, African American kid with serious dis development disabilities. He's very seriously disabled. And you, which means you usually get more money for Quante, right? Students like Quante bring more money in than other kids. And you still, with all that extra money, which you made sure you collected, you couldn't be bothered to give Quante anything like an education. And so you were gonna graduate him on a senior year, send him down the road with a diploma that means nothing. You're willing to do that in order to keep making money off of the illness of that African-American mm -hmm. kid and his family. 
How do you not have any shame? And you don't have any shame because American public schools are one of the few places in this country where you will reliably encounter systemic racism against minorities. How's that? Put it in your pipe and smoke it, you hypocrites. Now, you see this young man and your heart goes out to him. You know, he's probably had challenges all of his life and, and every part of life, but Baltimore. So, Dr. Duke, do you think this is happening across the country and we just haven't heard the stories about it? People or students not even being in class, but yet they're getting grades, but they're still paying taxes, of course. Is this happening more than we know? All over the place. Look, the bottom line is, is that the schools, the, for all their Marxist posturing, for all their gender bending <laughs> excitement to get their hands on your children, the one thing that they care about more than all the progressive uh, uh, programs that they've initiated is that money, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They, they're going to get their full complement of money. The, all, that's where Marxism goes right out the window, right? All this for, f faux socialism, right? That we're all comrades. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, what better way the scam works? The harder the kid to teach, the better it is for you when he's not there. You get more, just as much money if you report him, and then you don't even have to go out of your way to treat a kid with those kinds of disabilities. I mean, it's a win-win to progressive educrats, and they've made it very clear. They care much more about the money that they're getting for, the, for kids like Quante than they do having anything to do with making his kids, that kid's future bright and livable. You don't care. And it's always in the big cities like Baltimore and Ohio and Cleveland and Milwaukee and Chicago and Los Angeles. The more woke, the less you care about our kids, the more you use them. And the more you trample on the rights and the opportunities of African-American kids especially, you are the problem you say you fight. You are the locus of racism in this country right now. You have complete and utter control of the schools. Progressives, you do. And everything you've done in the last 70 years has pushed minority kids farther behind and enriched yourself. If this country was ever to fully, fully pulled, uh, if this country was ever fully able to purge racism, you would be the first thing we eliminate. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. Oh yeah, we're staying with the topic in the public schools, and according to this next story, head counts are down at public schools, and now budgets are too. Didn't see it coming. Head counts are down. ABC reported public school systems are beginning to feel the pinch from enrollment losses tied to the coronavirus pandemic. You gotta blame it on something. And then it goes straight to money talk. So money for schools is driven partly by student headcounts and emergency provisions in many states allowed schools to maintain funding at pre-pandemic levels. But like the billions of dollars of federal relief money that have helped schools weather the crisis, those measures were not meant to last forever. Examples, over in Kansas, where the school system is cutting 140 jobs, Deputy Superintendent John Hutchinson said the extra federal money merely put off the inev inevitable. But now, it's trimming millions of dollars from its budgets because enrollment, having peaked at more than 30,000 students in the fall of 2019, fell by around 900 in the first full school year of the pandemic. So less than 100 of those students have returned. That's interesting. So he asked during a public meeting, where did those kids go? Where are they? They didn't come back this year. That's what's laying on, that's what's laying on that additional reduction in our funding. So How far are we away? We just saw that horrible last story where kids, kids who are enrolled but don't go get treated as if they were there. How, how far away are the public schools for just inventing kids? Just make, wouldn't that be even be better? Because there would be no mom to actually reveal it. 
Why not just make up names? I, we shouldn't be talking to you about this. We shouldn't be saying this because they're gonna. They're, someone's gonna do it. Just make because there's no mom to ever find out, right? Yeah. No kid who never can get a job because he's never been at. Just make them up. And the answer, I love how they blame it on COVID. Clearly, these kids didn't die because no kids died of COVID, you morons. So it's not that they ever, they just dropped off the face of the earth. You couldn't educate them. You wouldn't education educate them. And when everybody else in the world was gone back without masks, you still held them out of school and made them wear masks. So this is all on you. Take a look at Houston, right? A much bigger system than mm -hmm. what we have in Kansas. Houston, the largest district in Texas. Enrollment tumbled by more than 22,000. Wow. Around 183,000 in fall of 21. Uh, uh, and only about half of those students have returned. Now, the, the, these, these hold harmless provision, uh, provisions have passed. Uh, are they're, or they're over with. Superintendent Millard House has asked departments to cut $60 million from next year's budget. It's the way it should be. And the reality is many of those families went to Christian or private schools, even more went to homeschooling, and more you let circle the drain and drown, right? To go under LM, to go under altogether without degrees. Your, your behavior, your, your protocols during COVID were so destructive, so largely unnecessary, all designed only to protect the vanity and the paranoia of your teachers and your teachers unions, all to the good, not, nothing to do, not, not in the least did you prioritize your kids. And and now you're losing them. And now you're losing their money, which really bothers you because using that, losing them wasn't a big deal until you got to come up with $60 million to make up for it. Two quick, quick observations. In Oakland, uh, they planned school closures and now they're leading to protests. But the ACLU filed a complaint this month alleging, ready, that they disproportionately affect black students mm. and families. That observation plus, Duke, where are they going if, they, if the students aren't coming back? Does that mean more are homeschooling or where else could they be going? Maybe the ACLU should ask Quante these questions, right? <laughs> Instead of yes. just assuming that black mm. kids are being neglected by COVID, ask Quante mm. who screwed him over, okay, ACLU? And then maybe once, this, since the year 2000, you could be actually on the side of the right kids or the right people. Hint, it's not the public schools. All right, we're heading to the university system when we come back. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. All right, the next school, university, the next school, the next story, University of California system weighs um, ending letter grades. Why? Well, it's due to bias and inequities, of course. So first it was the SAT, ACT, and now it's the entire letter grading system in California. So the University of California is thinking about getting rid of the entire letter grade system to solve bias and inequities. A uh, memo from March from the Public University System's Office of the President asks the Academic and Student Affairs Committee to consider, quote, more effective options for advancing achievement and education, educational equity than traditional grading practices. You so. can't have both of those things. It is <laughs> it's educationally impossible to focus on achievement and equity, and that's your problem. When you, to you yoke those two things together that are un completely incompatible, if you want achievement, you're going to have to have competition. You're going to have to push kids. They're going to have to distinguish kids. You have to start testing kids. You have to make a big distinction about how kids perform. You really, really don't care about achievement. What you care about is equity. And what would be the best thing you can do to make sure everybody is equal? In other words, everybody knows nothing. Because that's the only real equity there is. Because when you start actually teaching kids something you haven't done for a long time, kids distinguish themselves. Nope. Your kind of equity is, of course, the lowest common denominator equity. And that has nothing to do with achievement, right? So uh, let's call it what it is. This isn't about achievement. It's about equity. And of course you don't want grades because grades then distinguish. So how about no grades? How about no assignments? How about no actual classroom discussions or lesson plans? Don't teach them anything. What a perfect way 
to keep them in a state of absolute equitable flux. Let them just sit there and stare at the wall, all of them, eight hours a day, every day, while you collect the money for having taught them. Whether they come or not, no tests, no quizzes, no grades, no class ranks, no standardized testing, no, none of it. Let them sit there, stare at the wall, and you have created the perfect public school system equity program. Universal ignorance for everybody, no races excluded or taught a thing. Well, uh, University of California campuses that are testing pass, no pass grade models, US, or I'm sorry, UC Irvine, uh, the Division of Academic S Senate, there's a Division of Academic Senate. They extended the deadline to opt for pass, no pass grading to the 10th week of instruction. And of course, UC Berkeley, their College of Chemistry is planning on a pass, no pass model for first year students. Bonus, first year students. Yeah, let's pour some chemicals into a jar. It's chemical privilege, right? <laughs> some of those elements are much more radioactive and, radioactive and combustible, right? So let's ignore all that because that's privilege. Put all, just start randling, put them all in a big, big, great big beaker, shake them around, see what happens. So, that's so equity, right? You're saying chemistry is racist. Now, well, we, we already knew is, math was. I'm mocking them with chemistry because <laughs> in their chemistry programs, they're going to grade neutral grading, right? Pass, fail, either you pass or you don't. And if you pass, it doesn't matter if you get a D minus or an A, it's all the same thing, right? So I'm saying treat your subject matter the same way you treat your kids and watch labs blow up all over the country in stupidity. Before we go, let's take time to fill you in on a few stories that we've been discussing around the office. So we're going to start today with a radical move by Hollywood. After it was reported that China asked Sony to remove a critical symbol of Americana from the latest Spider-Man blockbuster, Sony politely said, shove it. Shocking, I know. But in the latest film, Spider-Man No Way Home, a crucial action scene takes place at the Statue of Liberty. Well, Chinese officials didn't want that freedom-loving propaganda giving their people hope, so they told Sony to either cut it or they wouldn't release the film in China. Since the scene is important to the plot of the movie, Sony declined the request. Here's a clip from the trailer that shows that scene. Peter, you're struggling to have everything you want while the world tries to make you choose. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. You know, until the very last two clips of that trailer, yeah. you, I bet you 90% of American kids would not have noticed even. American would, kids? Yes, would, would not even have noticed the Saturday. Maybe until the torch Until the came very out. torch, yep. right? Yeah, for the 90% of that, you wouldn't even tell how bad, that our kids could not. It was so yeah. filmed in such an odd way. At the very end, you did get to get it. So I guess what I would say is, is that, you know, this is the way to handle China. I mean, they, they don't make enough movies themselves. And you know what? They don't make enough movies that Chinese people want to watch. So mm. if the world would just stand strong and don't give in to them, so what? Sooner or later, China's got to decide, right? That wor banning it works for the first movie because there are other movies. If everybody stood their ground and said, you, we tell you what we're going to put in the movies. You don't tell us or you don't take our movies. Think about how much change you might be able to affect inside of China. And if they don't change, then let them in their t stew, in their own little bed that they've made for themselves. Why, why the China enablers? Because they're, they're rich, that's why, and money trumps everything. So this is what I love about these big corporations. They're, on the one hand, greedy money grubbers who are, who are willing to do business with China. On the other hand, every now and they, then they, they, they break woke protocols and try to stand up. Do that. Do, forget the money for five years. Just go for the, the jugular with these guys. 
spend a little money, lose a little money to put China in its place globally and watch how quickly the Chinese will wander back and with their, ha their head in their hands. But, you know, maybe, maybe this is the beginning of something with Sony. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. It's also probably not a coincidence that critics claim the latest Spider-Man is one of the few pro-America non-woke films to come out of Hollywood in a decade. But, uh, hey, in a twist of irony, here's a look at the logo for Columbia Pictures. Uh, the production company that produced Spider-Man for Sony. Notice anything in the center? Well, that's just awkward, isn't it? How many films do you think have that over in China that they just kind of forgot about? Well, it's, it's, it's not Lady Liberty, but it's also, it's the, it's the light of Columbia she is, right? Hmm. And it looks a lot like Liberty and Freedom and a lot like that Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. So now at the end of the day, a Sony didn't need China as Spider-Man No Way Home earned more than $1.9 billion at the box office, making it the sixth highest grossing movie of all time. Jeez. Anyway, speaking of powerful movies, famed Christian actor Kirk Cameron is back in the news as he prepares to launch his latest project entitled The Homeschool Awakening. Let's watch the trailer. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents. I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. I don't really understand this idea that parents should decide what's being taught. Give me a break. I always viewed homeschooling as somewhat of a cult. Quiet, reclusive. The different people. Abnormal in some way. I could never picture myself doing it. Oh no, those are weird. I'm not doing that. That was before we had kids. And then we had kids and... All of a sudden, time for school. And is this really what I should be doing? Dropping them off somewhere else. And the teacher said to me, he would not cheat off of you because you are too stupid for him to cheat off of you. My kid is not gonna have that experience. We didn't have to be a special needs teacher. We only had to be a, a teacher of our daughter. The kingdom of heaven is qualifying you to speak into your children's life. I'm responsible for what we're putting into their head and into their heart. It changed everything. I think as a kid, you just wanna feel like you're worth it. And homeschooling says you're worth it. Now, Kirk, God bless him, yep. he's kind of late to the game, right? There yeah. are dozens and dozens of programs yep. and, and major league national pushes for this. Uh, but thank you, Kirk. Yeah, I mean, you've been a leader in this before. I have no doubt that your curriculum is, and your, your plan, your movie is going to be very inspirational. But that's the good news, that there aren't, there's not just one Kirk Cameron anymore, right? That's yeah. the good news. They're all over this country. We've got movies. Uh, Schoolhouse Rock is just coming out. We've got the, uh, the US Pi, USPIE's movie coming out. I mean, there's just so many resources de developed now to cater to the kids and the moms and the dads who want something better for the kids. And so um, God bless Kirk, Kirk Cameron for what he's done. And now, welcome, but, but for this time, we're not following him. He's following a lot of the rest of us, yep. and good for him. I mean, we, the more of this, the better. The more opportunities like this, the better off our kids are going to be, and the, the less the public schools are going to be able to do about it. In a way, this sounds almost like a, more of an apologetic for homeschooling. He says the purpose of the documentary is to explore the ins and outs and give honest answers to homeschooling's most frequently asked questions. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to imply he had a curriculum here. I meant that yep. his, his advocacy is 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 the kind of thing that's been going on as well before COVID, right? And, and and I know he's done many things like this as well in terms of his encouragement of alternative learning for kids as well. So that's what we want. I mean, the it seems to me that the time is now. We've never had this kind of dynamic national push for homeschooling in so many different venues. And if we can get more and more moms and dads to take, to take advantage of it, it'll be it'll be a transformation. Uh, like any that we've seen before in public education. So Kirk Cameron's uh, documentary, The Homeschool Awakening, debuts in theaters June 13 and 14. So all right, let's wrap things up by counting down our top five Babylon Bee headlines of the week. So we'll be bringing Dr. Duke back to get his top pick. But there's a lot of good ones here. This week's theme is the anticipated overturning of Roe v. Wade. Here we go, Babylon B. Let's start with this one. Molech warns of looming child sacrifice supply chain issues. How about this one? Did your mom abort you? Take the quiz. 
Next, new poll shows surprisingly sizable majority of unborn babies favor overturning Roe. Next, buffalo hat wearing Elizabeth Warren leads insurrection against Supreme Court. And finally, Katanji Brown Jackson up all night reading biology textbooks trying to figure out what everybody means by women's right to abortion. Duke, this is a tough one, wow. I think. What, I mean, I, Quality effort. Go back to the very first one. Okay. Let me tell you why this one uh, excites me. Yeah, <laughs> because it combines the, the venality and the murdering of our children with the baby food sto shortage, which we're now suffering, with the idea of Old Testament child destruction. That's a threefer for me. Uh, <laughs> and the, the, the drawing looks exactly like something from one of those far side car car cartoons. <laughs> that's my choose. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this segment. More to come next time. All right, before we say farewell, I want to take a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members. Today, we give a shout out to Rosalie in Deming, New Mexico. Thanks for supporting us, Rosalie. We love you. And that wraps up the show. David, it was a pleasure having you here for the week. For all the rest of us, including Katie, who'll be back, stay educated, my friends.